In early 2020, I was eight months pregnant and working in a job that I took a lot of pride in. My baby arrived a little ahead of schedule, but everything was okay. A short time later, though, a pandemic swept across the globe. Not sure if you remember it. And the world went into what would be the first of many lockdowns. By Christmas, my life was fairly unrecognizable. Now, there are worse situations to be in. However, I was dealing with the trinity of first-time motherhood, a global pandemic, and unemployment. Any one of those things would prompt a bout of introspection. I'm sure those of you who remember winding a crying baby at 3 a.m., exhausted and covered in vomit, can relate. That is very much one of those if-you-know-you-know -know situations. And indeed, many of us did start to question what we did for a living and whether we wanted to keep doing it. The great resignation, as it became known, was soon well underway. My identity had been bound up in the broadcasting career I had had for nearly 17 years. I quite enjoyed when people said to me, I heard your report on the radio, that was really interesting. But if I wasn't doing it anymore, who was I and what was I worth? And it felt embarrassing to say that out loud because a woman in her late 30s going, I don't know who I am anymore, doesn't get much sympathy from an Irish mammy. Would you get away out of that? Which is a very Irish way of saying, stop being so self-indulgent and get some sense, urgently. A very Irish reaction, but I think probably a very universal one from the matriarch in every, in every home. I felt like I wanted to do something completely different, but I didn't know what. What if I tried something and I hated it? And I wasn't financially in a position where I could take time out to do a degree or retrain as something else. And it was intimidating to think about starting out again at anything. I didn't have a great business idea. If I pivoted to something else, I'd probably go in at the bottom rung of the ladder probably with a paycheck to match, and with a little baby at home, I didn't feel like that was a viable option. So I was scrolling my phone, catching sight of motivational memes like, follow your passion, reach for the stars, shoot for the moon, and quotes like, nothing is impossible, the word itself is, I am possible. <laughs> I wanted to throw my phone across the room. Meaningless rhetoric. I was a journalist. I was used to dealing with data and facts and concrete examples. This kind of saccharine internet speak was anathema to me. Whenever I would watch TV or hear stories on the radio of successful and influential people who had changed careers, they would always skip over. They wouldn't elaborate on the messy bit in the middle. You know, what was it like in the trenches when you were enduring all the pain without any guarantee of the gain? And I wasn't interested in hearing from serial entrepreneurs who were comfortable with risk and used to pivoting from one venture to the next. I wanted to hear from someone who'd left a good job that they were successful at, that on paper it didn't make any sense to leave. I wanted to hear from some nervous Nellies just like me. So, I started to ask people, I started to interview people. After all, these were skills I had in my previous job. If the questions I had hadn't been asked, I would ask them. And I spoke to some people who did major career pivots. I'm talking banker to mountain climbing instructor, professional athlete to TV presenter, bookmaker and single mum turned money mentor, and a social care worker turned florist to list but a few. It didn't matter who they were 
where they were from, how much money or how little they had, there were some common threads running through everyone's story. Here's what I learned. You need to figure out what it is you want, look at your mindset, and start with one small change. Firstly, and most fundamentally, you need to figure out what it is you want to do. <laughs> I know it's really obvious, it's almost laughable to say it out loud. Can you believe they let your one up on stage at TEDx Tralee to stage what is as clear as day? But that's actually really difficult. Think about it. There is the every day-to-day -day busyness that keeps us from having any time to ourselves. Did I lock the front door? Oh, I have to change that direct debit today. What am I going to cook for the kids later? I look online for some recipes. Ooh, five notifications. And before you know it, you're scrolling for 20 or 30 minutes. When do you get time to sit and just think about yourself and what you even like doing? Also, that dopamine hit we get from scrolling social media keeps us from ourselves, from looking inwards, from teasing out ideas in our minds like, am I in this job because I invested so much time and money in qualifying for it? Or am I living out someone else's dreams or my own? Wait, what are my dreams? Or I'm good at my job, people like what I do, but it leaves me feeling empty. Why? Figuring out what you want is actually really difficult. What your values are, what your needs are, and what fulfilling work would meet those needs. And that is before we even get to whatever particular hang-up we have about ourselves. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'm not good enough, smart enough, creative enough, confident enough. It's important to examine the narratives you've built up over the years about yourself. Why are you telling yourself you can't? What is that inner critic saying? The psychiatrist Professor Steve Peters calls that voice the chimp. That's the emotionally driven voice from the most primitive part of the brain, reptilian brain. It's with us from birth. It has kept the species alive. But it's important to recognize that voice for what it is. Talk to the chimp. Tell us, I see what you're doing. Thank you for trying to protect me, but I'm a grown up now and I've got this. I'll take it from here. Because if you listen to that voice, you will never make a move. But then there's money. I wondered how people manage to change careers when they had people depending on them. One of the narratives I had built up over the years was that pivoting was the preserve of wealthy people. A sports star or a lawyer sitting on a pot of cash, well-connected and privileged. Or someone in a double-income household whose partner could fund the transition. But now, I was speaking to people who had done it. I spoke to someone who was on a very modest wage and still managed to pursue her passion. To someone else who rented out a room in their home to make ends meet. I spoke to someone who kicked 15,000 euro of debt in one year, allowing her to leave the job she hated. That was a radical move, but there was nothing radical about the process. There was planning budgeting, cost-cutting, and finding an online support group to motivate her when things got really tough. But the biggest part of the process was also the other thread running through everyone's story. That money wasn't the biggest obstacle. It was how she looked at money, what her belief system around it was, what her, you've guessed it, her mindset. Maybe you're not ready to pull the trigger on a major move, but you can get ready. Have you ever thought about how the pandemic opened up huge possibilities for remote learning? You can live in Tralee, work locally, but complete a course in psychotherapy, machine learning, sustainability, with some of the 
most prestigious universities in the world. It's actually possible to think that big. You can be ready for that as yet unknown opportunity when it comes your way. And be aware that it might not come knocking so much as give the door a gentle tap, tap. Here's the bit that really fired me up, though. The part that made me truly understand that a tiny change can have an outsized impact. Say you're at a wedding and someone goes, yeah, I'll teach you how to play guitar. Do it. Call them up. Take them up on that. If you've thought to yourself, oh, you know, I've always wanted to try pottery, like throw down the clay on that spinning wheel, do it. Make time for a hobby. You'll be engaging with new people in new environments. That's networking. It's a little different to the traditional notion we have of it, but it's still making connections. You'll be engaging with new opportunities, priming your brain to spot those. And if nothing else, being able to belt out a few bars at the next wedding you're at, or make yourself the best mug for your tea break. I should say that I have been talking about switching careers here, but these basic principles apply to any big change. Remember when you survived before. You did it then, and you can do it now. Because here you are, you marvelous machine, you. Don't be afraid to try something different. You have one wild and precious life. Reframe how you're thinking. Scared is just another word for excited. Thank you. Thank you.